Yeah. Uh, so the I, actually, I think there are two lines in, in the Observer that are going to get uh, are already getting a lot of attention. So we'll start with the first one, which was the fact that you wrote that the counterfeit bucks line was not expected. It was it was not something that they thought was coming. Well, the young bucks, the young I bucks, mean, as, as far as as far as or, or other wrestlers no. I don't know what Tony noted. I, I don't know that it was, you know, whether it was approved by management or not. I only know that, that they were not aware, um, you know, of the line. And, and you know, I'm so there you go. But um, I thought that the interesting thing was because um, I asked Tony, you know, about um, the more interesting part of that, which is the one bill fill, mm -hmm. you know, in reference to the one billion dollar deal that's been talked about. And I don't know if there's any whatever, you know, interest or or. or you know, it's one of those weird things. It's like was talked about so much. And then, you know, it was it was never announced. And as far as I know, there's no deal, you know, unless they're hiding it. Um, there's no deal in place. But then Tony was, you know, interestingly said, yeah, that's the goal. Which yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, yeah, of course, that's the goal. But and I don't know. I you know it's funny because it's like I kind of put him in a, a weird position because, um, of course, it's the goal. But that means he's almost acknowledging it and and, you know, the possibility of it. And then it becomes a situation where, you know, if they get a deal and it's, let's say, 750 million, which is still a great deal. It's almost like it's it's a disappointment, even though it shouldn't be. So um, but it's it was just interesting. His his, you know, when I when I when I brought up the one billion dollar deal and he goes, yeah, that's the goal. So um, and if and if they get anything close to that. You know, it's like uh, that's the ball game. You know, I mean, that's there's no more, you know, losing money, you know, unless they just spend ridiculous, which, you know, the way that their budget is, I don't think that will happen. Um, and, you know, I mean, they're not going to beat WWE, but they're I mean, I, I they, you know, I think they've always been kind of here to stay, but they become a very profitable company regardless of house show attendance, regardless of pay-per-view numbers. Um, if they get that deal and they're going to be promoted hard because WBD has so much money invested in them. And we're coming at a time where television is, you know, the future of television is so questionable. So does that mean that like when, I mean, WBD would own them if, if this deal goes through. And again, if it's not signed now and it's something that's being negotiated a year from now, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with, uh, with rights fees as television gets weaker, do they start going down? In which case, you know, they miss, you know, something that looked great timing wise today may not look so great timing wise a year from now. I mean, there's so many, there's so many questions, you know, about, about this one. Um, and I it's mean, WWE, and it, it, WWE going to Fox when they did was really kind of ahead of the curve based on yeah. where TV's going today. Yeah, and the other part too is is you know you look at the the numbers for the week, and in eighteen to forty nine, I mean, all of these network primetime shows, and granted, a lot of them are reruns now, but still, I mean, for the week, the only thing that beats SmackDown the last two weeks, and granted, this last week SmackDown was an unusually high number, you know, because of the Jey Uso thing, but the only thing that beat them was like you know you you know we're talking U.S. Open golf, you know, Concacaf, soccer, and that's in Spanish, you know, on the, you know, the Mexican, this Univision, you know, um, or tell, um, I think it was Univision and, you know, of course, you know, NBA finals. And I mean, they're beating everything else, which is, uh, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not like they're out there being an also ran and they're kind of like middle of the pack. I mean, they're doing really well because television continues to fall. WWE is growing and, um, you know, and, and, and sports are, you know, it's, it's the sports are doing better, I think, but the rest of television, the entertainment aspect of television is mostly going down. And so sports become more and more important and wrestling is, you know, it's kind of sports and it's kind of not sports, you know, but it's, it's just consistent is what it is. It's 52 weeks a year of good numbers. Yeah. I mean, across the board. Now the, uh, the line is that, David Zaslav wanted this second show. Now, for everyone else paying attention to what is going on uh, with this company, they're just cutting left and right and trying to, yeah, you know, create, you know, trying to get uh, out of the debt. Uh, has it been explained why 
this, you know, is it because it's a little bit lower cost TV for what we just said, consistent ratings? Does, is it because he really believes in the AEW product? Like, I, I like the line. I think it's great that that he is so invested, but like, it just doesn't make sense with everything else that that company's doing. Did you see the line about power slap and David Zasloff? No. Okay. It's, it's, it's in the issue. So, um, I mean, there was an article in the Hollywood reporter, um, I believe it was yesterday. Um, and they were talking, it, it was a profile on David Zasloff and one of the, um, one of his ex lieutenants or one of the ex executives there talked about the, um, the discussions for power slap and just how everyone was against it. And David Zasloff kind of saying because of his closeness with Ari, you know, um, which is funny because Power Slap is a Dana project, not really an Airy project. But yeah. he did mention, I think he mentioned, I think Craig Pelegian's name was also mentioned in Dana's name. But that he was insistent on Power Slap and kind of the idea that this blew up in their face. They, nobody wanted it. It blew up in their face because, you know, the ratings weren't good and they got a ton of criticism. And it was just kind of like trying to say, but if he was, and, and, and remember Power Slap was done um, with the idea of keeping the AEW audience which you know it it didn't do a great job of obviously um so you know it's like um it was just it was just interesting that maybe this is you know it's kind of a thing about zasloff liking junk sports or junk <laughs> thing and and you could make the argument that too many people you know pro wrestling fits into that especially because pro wrestling does draw good ratings right now yeah and and that's what i thought when uh when when max when hbo combined with discovery plus that's why i thought i was like okay i know what's on discovery pro wrestling fits a little bit better on a discovery model than it fits on a historical hbo model so maybe there is you know room for something uh, on max for for aw but that is where he comes from or at least recently that is where he comes from which is this reality television network uh so that makes that makes a lot of sense to me yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was at least if, if you know, Tony has, has certainly put the story out that it was his call trying to equate it. Um, he never used this exact term, but I know that the, you know, you're trying to equate it with when Ted Turner told Eric Bischoff, you got two hours of prime time on TNT, which, you know, was a, you know, I mean, it, that was that changed the game. And this is the same thing in that, hey, you got you know, we want, we obviously had to pay for it and, and there was a lot of things that were there, but yeah, two more hours of, uh, of television and, you know, um, does it overexpose the product? Does it heat up the product? Um, you know, you, you never know. I mean, uh, there's, there's examples of plus and there's examples of minuses, uh, that are both very, very long when it comes to adding product. And, um, you know, I mean, the key is if you have a hot angle, you'll, you'll do well. And if you don't have a hot angle, you know, then, um, you know, and, and the other company is like blowing, blowing you away, you know, it probably would be a negative. So it's, um, it's very important for them to have a, a very, I think it's very important for them, a very strong product, especially because their competition is very strong right now. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you, Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow. Look at oh, that, everybody. Wow. Holy smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs>
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.